Buying a puppy from a reputable breeder. Firstly, I would like to explain a little bit about the nature of buying a puppy and my own experiences as a breeder. I hope this will help you, the purchaser, understand that the breeding and selling of a puppy from a breeder standpoint. Once that has been explained, we can explore choosing the right breeder. I fully accept that I am by no means perfect, but I do try my best as a seller breeder of puppies and as a purchaser myself. Then I will go through the things to look for and the things to steer well clear of. Times have changed quite a lot since my parents started breeding over 30 years ago. Social media wasn't really a thing then. You either found a breeder through the show ring or you would use tools like the free ads newspaper or classifieds to find a puppy locally. Usually these puppies were advertised once they were able to leave for their new homes so you could easily pick your puppy. It was also relatively simple to go and visit your breeder or have home checks done as most of us chose puppies local to where we lived. The internet has changed this hugely. Puppies can now be advertised before they're even born. Waiting lists through the websites and breed-specific pages on platforms such as Facebook have made choosing a puppy from further afield far more accessible to us. Just as you were getting used to the new scenario, COVID threw a spanner in the works. Prior to COVID, we would personally allow people to come and view the puppies in our home and get a feel for them, etc. Meet mum and dad if he was ours. And we've had a few visits with us before the puppy left us between eight and ten weeks old. Covid has put a dent in this. Firstly, our homes are now our safe place and having large footfalls in our homes can prove difficult, especially if we have people at home who are at high risk. We have personally tried to make sure we have lowered this risk for everyone involved. For example, I try to get everybody here on the same day at different times throughout the day. I use just one room for reviewing, or if the weather permits, we do the meetings in the garden. This is so I can disinfect the room more easily and people still get to meet their puppy. I know, sadly, that many people have used COVID as an excuse to allow people from visiting. And this can be difficult, especially with all the problems we've already listed. However, there is a way around this, and that is to do lots of phone calls, video calls, and photographs and videos for the owners, so they still get to see their puppy, but with no risk to the vulnerable people in our homes. I ask that the families coming to view their puppies limit who they are bringing. For example, I don't need grandma, granddad, and a whole host of extended family members turning up for this first very important meeting. Not only is it unnecessary, but most importantly, it can be very unsafe for the puppy and extremely stressful on mum and the other pups alike. Those meetings can be done gradually at your own home once the puppy is vaccinated. Every breeder will have their own procedure. But as I've previously mentioned, the internet and social media has allowed families to follow the journey of their puppy from conception onwards. I believe it is now very rare to meet a litter of puppies that hasn't been allocated to their new owners before the litter is eight weeks old. This means that choosing your puppy is now a very different scenario than it once was. For example, if you are picking a yellow Labrador puppy, you only have the one colour and the two sexes to contend with. In this scenario, it is easy for a breeder to work on a first-come, first-served basis, obviously once they've chosen their own keepers. However, if you have a breed with multiple colours or variations, such as the Chow Chow, things can become more difficult. With our own procedure, we will allow deposits to be placed on a puppy once it is three weeks old. The choice at this stage is solely on the colour and sex. But to get to this stage, I will have spoken to my prospective owners at length and they will have been put on a short list so I know that they are ready to take on one of my puppies. If there is more of one colour sex of their first choice available, the first person to place a deposit has the first pick on the puppy. Usually this is from videos, photos and discussions to me as to what it is they are after. This means that with the majority of my litters, the puppies have already been assigned to their new owners before they've even come to visit us. I'm going to make this clear that if this type of procedure doesn't suit you and you want to choose your puppy in person, you need to discuss this with your future breeders to see if that is the procedure they follow as well. 
So what is a good breeder? Is it somebody who shows lots and has many, many awards and championships in their kennel? Is it somebody who breeds regularly? Maybe it's someone who just has one litter for the experience of it. Honestly, the answer to this can be yes and no to all of the above. I have met some people who are very successful in the show ring, but I would never want to buy a puppy from them. There are those people who breed regularly, who are nothing more than puppy mills, churning out dogs who are kept in horrific conditions. Does this mean that everyone who breeds regularly does this? Absolutely not. Many commercial breeders put their heart and soul into their dogs and puppies. Lastly, the families that just breed one or two litters, are they the best? Are they the most knowledgeable? Can you come to them with problems? Are they able to have the dog back if things were to go wrong? If no, then they probably aren't the best choice, especially if you were a novice yourself. There is no perfect setup and no one perfect scenario, but my aim is to help you find the right fit for you and your family. Your breeder. I need people to remember here that when they are discussing puppies with a breeder, that we are human. We have good days and bad days. We have travel plans, holidays and children just like you. Please don't be alarmed if you call a breeder on the phone and they say, look, this isn't a great time. Can I call you back? A good breeder will pour everything they have into their puppies. They are their family members. And in many cases, this litter could have been the hard work and preparation of many, many years of planning. Good breeders will ask you the hard questions like how many hours you're planning to leave your dog or puppy. Are you aware of the health risks or problems in this chosen breed? How are you going to feed the puppy? When do you plan on neutering the dog? Can you afford the insurance, vet bills, food, groomers trips, kenneling for your dog? They may also ask you your health and your health status. If you can't or aren't, won't answer these questions, please be prepared for a breeder to turn you down and not sell you a puppy. It is their right not to do so. Please remember that a puppy is a living, breathing thing. It's not a washing machine, that if it breaks, you can return or replace. Good breeders will do everything in their power to breed strong and healthy puppies, but things can and will go wrong. Breeders are not gods. We cannot see into the future. All we can do is learn from any mistakes made. To do that, in many cases, we need our puppy owner's help and assistance so that we can make informed decisions into our future breeding programmes. If you, the purchaser, can't or don't want to deal with issues, please don't buy a puppy. As a breeder, it's soul-destroying to hear something has gone wrong with your puppy, so speak to your breeders. They want to help you. When inquiring about a puppy to a breeder, please, please remember to be polite and ask reasonable questions. If you can't even write a full sentence properly, please don't expect a breeder to respond. I often get texts like, how much? That's it. That's the entire question. Funnily enough, I don't respond to text messages like this. Good breeder things to look out for. So breeders should be open to having conversations with you about their dogs and their puppies and ask you the hard questions. We personally start this in a form of a waiting list form and encourage videos and phone calls after. Honestly, I love a good list of questions. It really means you've thought this breed through. A good breeder will discuss breed traits and health issues in their breed with you without becoming defensive and will advise based on your answers if this is indeed the right breed for you. I know you don't want to hear this, but you need to be aware that a good breeder can and will say that their breed or puppy isn't right for you. For example, if you work very long hours and can only give your dog minimal exercise each day, it would be unfair of you to approach a beagle owner a breed that needs huge amounts of exercise and stimulation, just because you think this breed is the prettiest breed. The breeder will tell you that the puppy won't be suitable in that sort of environment. The dog and puppy you choose has to fit your lifestyle as well, or you will run into problems straight away. You may be a huge walker and runner and want a dog to join in with that activity with you. If that's the case, a chow chow isn't right for you and a good breeder will put the needs of their dog or puppy before yours. Your chosen breeder should be able to discuss all the paperwork associated with their puppies and be able to give this to you up front. 
These include KC papers and pedigrees, explanations into endorsements, vaccination records, vet reports, license information, the worming regime, any information on the microchip, and advice on exercise, diet and the socialisation of your puppy. And lots of advice on what you will receive before you collect your puppy. A good breeder will also have you over to meet the puppy, obviously within COVID rules, and make sure every effort to show you the puppy has been done. This may be via video calls, videos, photographs. It'll also show you where mum and the puppies have been raised, so you can see the environment they've been born into. They will show you mum and dad where possible and any other family members. A good breeder will not let you have your puppy until it's at least eight weeks old and 10 weeks old if you're having the second injection with the breeder. This is because it's the law. A good breeder will be contactable during the puppy's and dog's lifetime for any help and assistance. A good breeder's dogs will be happy to see you. They'll be healthy and clean and not smelly and matted. If they don't have puppies available at the time, a good breeder will add you to their waiting list and let you know when puppies are available. A good breeder knows that socialisation is a hugely important part of a puppy's development and will spend one-on-one -on -one time with their puppies. They'll give you evidence of this and provide lots of toys and fun exercises and lots of love for each of their pups. This will be very obvious in the videos and photos they send to you of your puppy. A good breeder will show their puppies have been socialised to new things, such as the washing machine, TV noise, the hoover. They've been bathed and blow dried and possibly met other dogs and cats and hopefully children. This means that you have much less to do with those um, first steps with your puppy as they've already been exposed to lots of scary things. A good breeder will always take a puppy back that they have bred if the need arises. This may be your own health issues, a family divorce or bereavement. So please ask your breeder up front what is their policy for this. A good breeder provides a written contract with the terms they find acceptable for their puppy, which should also outline any medical problems that have been diagnosed and a procedure for returning the puppy should needs be in the future. A good breeder will also give you lots of help and advice, both written and verbal, for the lifetime of your puppy. OK, so now I'm going to highlight some of the bad things that breeders may do, stuff that you really need to look out for. And first off is the immediate red flag stuff. So if a breeder does not want to show you mum or is giving you excuses to where mum is when you visit, run. If the mum and puppies are dirty, greasy and smelly or the conditions of where mum and dad and the pups have been are terrible, please, please turn around and leave. If the mum and pups don't want to interact with you and the breeder is trying to use sympathy to rush you into a decision, this is not a good situation and you need to use your head here over your heart. If the puppies are terrified, shaking in the corner and don't know how to interact or understand their surroundings, suggesting they've been kept in a barn or not in the home that you're visiting. If the breeder is playing on your sympathy or coming up with sob stories as to why the puppies are in such bad condition or why mum may be injured or dirty. Again, this is a way to emotionally blackmail you into taking a puppy from them. And the breeder asking you to send money to a name you aren't familiar with or asking for the funds in cash only and not giving you any form of receipt. In all of these cases, please do not buy the puppy to, and I quote here, rescue it. All you are doing is giving the, the breeder the incentive to do this again. Instead, report these people to the police, the RSPCA and trading standards immediately and walk away. If you have paid money for a puppy, you have bought it. You haven't rescued it. And you are giving the breeders the money to do this again to more dogs. Things that might seem off. Not necessarily red flags, but just don't seem right to you. OK, so this is where the grey areas come in. And here you do need to use your head and not your heart. If something feels off, walk away. Don't come away with a puppy if you are not happy. And this can be from birth and not just at collection. 
So has the breeder had a long chat with you prior to collecting your puppy? Are you happy with the communication you have received? Have they been easily contactable? Is your puppy bright and active? Have who had all your questions answered? Or do you feel you're still in the dark in lots of areas? Is the area you are in collecting your puppy familiar to where you have seen the photos and videos? Is this the place you believe the puppies were raised? If they won't produce a copy of their licence, if asked, or giving excuses as to why they don't have one, this can also be a bit odd. Not giving you a contract or paperwork. By law, puppies need to be microchipped and vaccinated when leaving the breeder. Is that presence? Do you have vet information, insurance papers, etc. with your puppy? If not, I would be worried about why. Again, asking you to send money to a name you aren't familiar with or asking for funds in cash only. If the name is unfamiliar, it may be that they're trying to get around taxes or licence rules or they're sending money to somebody else and therefore your contracts and things are invalid as you didn't pay the person you collected the puppy from. Also, if they're asking for cash only, it may mean that they're trying to do this without alerting the authorities if they're trying to push you into making a decision quickly, especially if you feel you aren't in the res receipt of all the facts up front, this can be quite stressful and you should turn around and walk away. Or say to them that you would like to have a few minutes to discuss it privately without them there. If the breeder is offering to deliver the puppy to you, to a car park or garage, etc., without you having ever seen the property or the parents of the dogs or puppy in question, then this can be very worrisome. This is different if you have already been to the property and seen your puppy, but the breeder is delivering at a later date. This is fine, as is using a courier, especially if you live a long distance. But in these cases, please make sure you have received lots of footage and live videos so that you can see where and how the puppies are being raised. And lastly, do you feel prepared for this puppy? Do you feel you have and are in receipt of all the information that you need? Do you know the parents, the status of the puppy, and are happy that this puppy is what you've asked for? If not, these are questions that you really need to look into before you go ahead and give the breeder any money. Where to find responsible breeders? So where can you find one? The best possible place to start is word of mouth. If you see a dog you like, politely ask the owner where they got it from and if they would indeed recommend the breeder. This can easily be done on social media too. Let's face it, most dog owners are delighted to discuss their precious pooch with everyone and anyone they meet and they can tell you lots of information on the breed too that you may not have considered. Dog shows are also a great tool. You can meet breeders and owners alike and it's a wonderful way to help you decide what it is you do and don't like within the breed. I have shared two sites in the bio that list all the upcoming details of upcoming dog shows in the UK and I'm sure you'll find something local to you in there. Whichever breed you're interested in, there are breed clubs to go with it and in most cases, in each breed, there are multiple clubs to choose from. A quick Google search should point you in the right direction of the breed clubs and their secretaries. The Kennel Club will have a list of their accredited breeders and litters that you can access through their website on the Find a Puppy service. Although I'm aware that not all Kennel Club registered dogs and breeders are perfect, but if you go armed with the right questions to guide you, you'll be able to pick out the dodgy ones. Ask your vet for advice on breeders that they would recommend and ask them too on any breed specific questions you may have to do with health and wellness. There are selling sites. Again, I will try and post the good ones, but please make sure you are armed with lots of questions and don't proceed until you are 100% happy and you have the right feel for the breeder you've chosen. Once you have found a breeder or breeders that you are happy with, call them and have a chat. Don't worry about speaking to multiple breeders. You will soon realise that the cream rises to the top. In conclusion, I think it's important for the owner and purchaser to take the responsibility for what they purchase. And that includes the good, the bad, and the ugly side of dog ownership. If you want the best, you must be prepared to A, wait for it, B, pay for it, and C, take the responsibility for that life. 
If you rush off and buy the first puppy you see, you may be very disappointed in the future. Always, always, always do your research and then do some more. I can't explain to you how important this is. Choose a puppy that fits your lifestyle. There are lots of apps that match people and dog breeds to make sure that the puppy that you want to invite into your home really does fit the lifestyle that you are living. Never purchase from somebody you're unhappy with. It's better to lose your deposit than have your life turned upside down with a dog that has developmental, social or physical problems. Never make a split second decision. This puppy or dog could be in your life for the next 10 to 15 years, so make sure it's the right one. Things can and will go wrong from time to time. If that's something that you are not prepared to deal with, please don't buy a puppy. If you have any questions, please let me know via my contact forms on my website, or you can email me or find me on my social media. Or please leave comments below. Hope this has helped you, help you to find the right breeder for you. Thank you.